It is the day after Thanksgiving in this, the year of our pestilence 2020, and I will be spending Black Friday, much like I will be spending the rest of the holiday season, at home, trying to avoid the covid masses and not get the plague. Since I will not be seeing my family for the holidays this year, I find myself with a bit of time on my hands, and even more nostalgia than usual for better days. Luckily for us, Jeanette, over on the YouTube channel A Perfect Touch, created the Home for the Holidays 2020 collaboration. The goal of this collaboration is to create some sort of holiday-inspired outfit or costume. Any holiday doesn't have to even be finished in this holiday season. Honestly, whatever brings you joy to make, we want to see it and be part of it. That's true whether you're a cosplayer, a history-bounding channel like we are, a historical costumer, just love vintage garments, even if you make your own modern clothes. We'd like everyone who wants to to get involved, and we've made it as open and inclusive as we possibly can. If you can think of it, and if you want to try it, we want it to be part of this collaboration. For my family, opening our presents in our pajamas is a staple of the holiday season. So for my Home for the Holidays History Bounding project, I decided on a linen shift with lots of lace and pin tucks and ribbons for flouncing down the stairs on Christmas morning. Since a traditional Victorian Christmas in the late 1800s would have probably started with a trip to church for morning services, the idea of flouncing down one's stairs in one's underwear to open presents is quite anachronistic. In fact, the idea of flouncing around the house at all in your We shall consider this part of the charm of this history-bounding endeavor. And, after all, who doesn't need a good flounce now and then? Especially in this, the year that wasn't. I have decided to try this as a vlog in two acts. Today we shall endeavor to get through the mock-up. I'm not sure on the sleeves. It seems like sleeves are important for optimal flouncing, but they're sleeves, and we all know how putting in sleeves go. So I'm going to make them on the mock-up and see how they go, and then we'll decide on whether or not we want them in the finished project. Our second act, coming in late December, shall be the final project. Hopefully, this will be in time for some December 25th flouncery, even if just for the benefit of my house and the bunnies. So we'll be making pattern 100, the ladies' Victorian underwear shift, which is the shift underneath these corsets from Laughing Moon Mercantile. Here I've cut out all of the yoke pieces, there are six, and the front and back body. I just still have the sleeves to do from my mock-up fabric. So my next steps are to finish cutting out my sleeve pieces and then sew all of the pieces together. I'm hoping to try gathering the yoke into the body of the shift in the pin tucks today too. I've also got some stash lace, something that I had from Joann's from years ago, that I'm gonna try doing the edging with to see how I like that effect. I bought some really nice beading lace that I'm gonna try to thread some ribbon through, but that hasn't come in yet, and that's for the final garment. So I don't wanna try it on the mock-up, but I do wanna try the lace edging on the mock-up and see how I feel about it. So. We shall endeavor to get as much of that done as we can done today. It is 10.06 a.m. I turn into a pumpkin at 9 p.m. So we'll see what we can get done. Okay, so I have traced out the sle straight sleeve pattern and I'm about to cut it out and then cut two out of the mock-up fabric. So we'll see how the sleeve goes while we're making this. I've run into a little bit of trouble in that the instructions for making it with the sleeve and without the sleeve are quite different, so I don't know if I'm committing myself to making it with the sleeve. It is 10.01. I have managed to trace the pattern for the sleeve and cut it out, and I have stay stitched all of the curved edges on my yoke pieces for the pattern mock-up. Um, I missed my morning snack, so I'm thinking an early lunch, and then back to sewing yoke pieces together and the sleeves. All right, I've had lunch. It's 11.31, and we are back to sewing together our yoke pieces. Here we go. So what I have here is my yoke and my yoke facing. They should lay nicely on top of each other and both be the same shape, not opposing curves. One has this S shape and one has this C shape, which is absolutely correct since humans are not S shaped. Luckily, all I will have to do here is pull out these shoulder seams, flip these pieces over, and then sew them back in. So it should be an easy fix. 
The next step is to pin all of this lace into the front yoke and collar on the yoke piece. So it's 2.30 p.m. I've got the top yoke piece almost done. I've added the lace. I've set in the sleeves. They still need to be sewn underneath, which is part of adding it to the body. Um, I'm a little bit concerned with the way this is sitting right now, though we'll have to see once it's attached, that it's going to be too big. Um, so, we will finish assembling it and see if I need to grade this down just a bit. I used my waist measurement, but I'm thinking now that maybe I should have used um, my bust measurement for fitting. If that's the case, we'll see how much we need to take out once we get to that point. Um, but for now, I'm really happy with how it's going together. So it's assembled, except that it still needs this facing piece in, which you put in, and then you, on the finished garment, will turn under and hand stitch to the sleeve. I will not be doing that for the mock-up um, because this is really just to fit and test out the pin, uh, pin tucking and lace. It is currently 3.01 p.m. I've finished the yoke and I've gathered the front of the shift into the front of the yoke. At this point, it's had me leave this part open, so we still have to deal with that. It, I still have to gather the back into my yoke and then do the side seams, which for this I'm just gonna base, but on the final garment, I'll do French seams. And I think we're about done after that. Oh, pin tucks. Um, my, looks like a keyhole back. Um, my only real qualm at this part, I'm still a little bit worried it's going to be too big. And the problem with the check fabric I'm using is it has a bit of the effect of being a moo moo, which is fine if that's what you're into, but maybe not quite the look I was going for. Luckily, it is just a mock-up, so I will have no problem throwing it in the cabbage patch and cutting it up later for future mock-ups. I'm going to take a quick break for a snack since I've been at it since 11 a.m., and then we'll see how much further we can get tonight. Good morning, so it's officially tomorrow. I was hoping to get all of the mock-up except the Pintux finished last night. That did not happen. So the back of this shift is gathered into the yoke, which mostly went fine. This piece here, which is from the gathering to under the arm, has to be eased at in two very different directions. So the one is a sharp convex and one is a sharp concave curve and to ease those in took me much longer than i thought it would i essentially ended up making fringe of my seam allowance to get them to ease together and still had some difficulties and then wound up hand sewing all of the pieces together because that was the only way i could get them to fit when i tried to put them through the machine i just kept getting tucks in the fabric. So I did a quick running stitch, 
through the entirety of the back this morning and now I've got those pieces together. I also sewed up the sides so I've got a basic shift now in shape and size and it did fit. I was really pleased with that. So this is my shift front. It's a little hard to tell what it is with this fabric. But what I need to do at this point is take this piece of the yoke front, which is center front, and this piece of the yoke front, fold under these seam allowances, stitch them to this, which is the center front of the main shift piece, and sew them all together so that I have a finished front. Um, on the final garment, this will get a button on this piece and buttonholes here. But for the mock-up, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to sew these down to make sure that we can pin fit it. So as you can see here, I have finished my mock-up. I am quite pleased with it. I did have to play with the back a bit to be able to reach my arms forward. One thing we know about historical garments is that the arm size were set in such a way that it made that sort of forward reaching motion a bit difficult. But I felt that for something I wanted to be able to wear around the house, I was probably going to want to be able to do things like reach over my head and reach forward, especially for reaching presents while flouncing. This is the gusset piece I created to make it so that I could reach forward. I split the back yoke on this stripe and then spread it out so that I could add about an inch to the back. I wanted the shoulders to stay the same and this worked out perfect. So it still fits through the neckline, but I now have more room in the back shoulders. I put in two pin tucks, one of which worked, one of which didn't, but now I feel like I understand it well enough that I can do it on the final garment. So our next step, and this will be act two of our vlog, is to make the real garment out of our linen fabric. Also, my lace has arrived, crisis narrowly averted, and my ribbon does fit it. So I'm very excited to say that we will have plenty of flippery for optimal flouncing. If you enjoyed this, if you're making your own Home for the Holidays challenge, if you have thoughts on making your own shift, I would love to hear about it in the comments. What are you doing for the holidays and how are you making them special this year? And with that, I remain your ever faithful 21st century Victorian, Francis Worthington.